Hey everyone, Brian Mann here, Hands-On Auto Training. I've been working really hard on a lot of ADAS uh, projects, uh, putting some course material together for that that will be up on a membership site soon. Uh, but in the meantime, I do have a uh, recent experience. This was a 2019 Chevy Traverse, and this is a learning experience all around. I want to share with you guys some of the stuff going on with it. Kind of interesting what we run into uh, on a daily basis dealing with body shops. In this example, uh, originally I was called out or actually put on a schedule to come out and program a park assist control module on this Chevy Traverse. But uh, as you see here, we ended up having some other issues. We had uh, some bad sensors and also some bad wiring, which we're gonna get into in a second. But first I wanna talk about uh, what to do when we get a call for uh, programming a sensor or a module uh, with ADIS. Uh, in my example here, we're using all data. I can go ahead and click on this Chevy Traverse here. Uh, all that has a lot of great references. As you see here, they have their uh, quick reference guide for ADIS. Guys, this is a guide. It is not a definitive 100% uh, source. As you see here, if I click on this, uh, they give you the locations. This is the location view over here. Then you also can look up the component or the system. If I click on the system here, and I scroll down, I want you to see that we can see our park collision warning, okay? Uh, the module right here says it's in the trunk uh, and the alarm sensors are in the bumper. The bumper sensors say there's no calibration required. However, the park assist uh, control module uh, it says that it requires a static calibration, uh, which is really interesting. So the best thing to do at this point is to just look up this module. Okay, you can click on component and uh, we can go to our park assist module right here and we can go to remove and replace. And this shows you where it is in the trunk. You know, we got our location. Here's the module. And they pretty much tell you once you replace it uh, to go to control module references for the programming and setup. Uh, of course, we get to this page. Uh, easiest thing to do when you're confronted with a big page is control F. And I'm just going to type in park. And you'll see we can get right down honed into where we need to go for our park assist control module. Uh, they've got our schematics. Uh, we're going to go over to programming and setup. Okay. Now, right here, this is where it was interesting because on uh, all that is uh, ADIS guide, it said it required a static calibration. Really, it's not so much a static calibration from this procedure here. It's more of a, a configuration. First, you have to program the module, and then you have to set it up. So as you see here, uh, if you're replacing the module, basically we go ahead here and go to the programming. And after the programming is complete, then we go ahead over to our uh, uh, configuration. There's another menu for configuration. So we're going to walk through that in a second. But first, we have to deal with a bigger situation. The body shop had called me up and said, hey, we're ready for you to come out and program that park assist module. This vehicle doesn't start and run. We can't move it. Nothing's working on it. So uh, pondering this as I'm driving over, I'm thinking, hey, let's always start with the basics. We got to do a complete vehicle DTC scan. I got on site and uh, we scanned the vehicle with GDS2. And as you see here, uh, first of all, I verified the concern. We don't have a vehicle that starts or runs, can't turn the key on. And you can see we have no communication with uh, most of our high-speed bus here. This is all uh, dead to the world, if you will. And uh, our low-speed bus is not online except for the instrument cluster that's pin one of the DLC and uh, our serial gateway module and I believe our radio. Those modules are set in codes, but everything else is dead on the network. I was kind of really tripped up by that thinking about it. Um, but uh, I had to go ask the body shop uh, what all they'd done, what they took apart, what they didn't take apart. And it did turn out that they had the rear bumper fascia off this thing. I wasn't aware about that. I don't know why they replaced the park assist module, but it was replaced. But they did have the rear bumper cover off. I poked around a little bit. And as I wiggled uh, uh, the rear bumper cover on the left side of the vehicle, all of a sudden this thing sprang to life. Once that happened, I rescanned the vehicle. This is our next scan report. This is just a few minutes later, uh, five minutes later or so from when I did that first one uh, scan report. And you can see here, now our engine control model's online, the vehicle turned on, uh, but we still have a lot of issues with our uh, low speed network. Now some of these, I hit the uh, report button before I capture everything, but you can see here, uh, our body control module is still alive, and uh, we also have no communication with our uh, sensing and diagnostic module, our uh, passenger presence modules uh, still dead, and uh, a lot of things were still not working right. We had a lot of warning indicators on the dash. 
at this point, I decided, well, hey, I know it's back by this bumper. Let's talk about what's back there or take a look at the uh, diagram for this park assist module. Because I know that those uh, wire harnesses always get damaged in accidents running along the bumper. That's something you see often. You can see here that everything runs through this connector 400 uh, for the whole park assist system. Everything goes through. Uh, connector 400. So I wanted to take a look at a connector end view of connector 400. And if you look at this, uh, we can see here, this is the connector end view. And in this view, if you scroll down, you will see all the different uh, wires and the circuits that run through here. And what I'm really interested in is this one right here, this low speed GM LAN. This is a green wire. Okay, guys, this green wire right here is what the problem was. It was getting squished up to a bunch of other wires causing uh, the low speed network to go down or be intermittent or whatnot and multiple modules not to communicate. Therefore, the vehicle would not turn on. Now, separating these wires so they weren't shorted together like you see here, uh, the vehicle did start and run. However, we were still left with a B1405 code in the uh, Park Assist system. Uh, that's the only code it was setting, and I couldn't program the module. I didn't even try to program the module, to be honest with you, because I knew uh, it didn't even set a code for not being programmed. So taking a look here, this B1405 code is all about a 12-volt reference uh, being shorted to ground, okay? And I did not go through this uh, whole flow chart. What I did is I went over here, and I looked at the diagram, and I saw that this uh, brown and white wire here, let me see if I can blow this up for us, uh, this brown and white wire is the 12 volts that goes down uh, to all the park assist uh, sensors. So uh, at connector two here, or pin two of this uh, connector, which that's right over here, pin two, right behind this gray and yellow wire, uh, I had myself uh, like 0.8 volts. If I unplugged this connector, it went to 12 volts. That meant that something else was shorted down the line in the harness here. So I was pretty confident uh, we had something going on. I had actually found a bad sensor uh, when I'm saying a bad sensor, we unplugged one of the sensors and the connector for the sensor actually came off uh, a part inside of the connector and then it had another bad sensor. So after we got all these sensors replaced uh, properly, we ended up getting actual codes in the park assist module saying it wasn't programmed. As you see here, now we had a code in this uh, module right here uh, basically saying the parking assist control module was not actually programmed. Um, and now this code went to history, the 1405 code was a history code, and we got this park assist control module not programmed, and we also have the vehicle identification number not programmed into that module. So at this point, we just had to start our programming process, which was pretty straightforward, nothing fancy here. You can see we select our K182 park assist control module. Um, you go to this screen, and it shows you the current calibrations and uh, all that. I like going to the next screen. Uh, where you can see all the calibrations all at once. We got this unrecognized calibration right here. We're gonna go ahead and click on the start programming process. Guys, this is about a minute program. We got our warranty claim code saying that the job was complete. Next, we had to select our configuration procedure, which is right here. We select this. SPS2 does a configuration, which is actually really fast. It didn't take long to do this procedure at all. We get a warranty claim code. At this point, I went ahead and I went to vehicle diagnostics. I want to clear all the vehicle DTCs. We'll click on add all here and hit OK. And uh, at that point, we cleared all the vehicle DTCs. And now it's time to verify the proper operation of this system. As you see here, we do put it into reverse. The camera is working, the sensors are working, and we're good to go. Guys, this was a pretty simple and straightforward procedure. Interesting diagnostic because we had multiple bad sensors, pinched wires, and also to do the programming. So if you're interested in more content like this, please do like and subscribe. If you really want to learn even more in depth about how to do these functions and procedures and stuff, be sure to check out handsonautotraining.com. Click on the membership link and sign up from there. It's $10 a month for the core membership that gets you access to a lot of great training. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.